This is Gail. Thanks for coming, Gail. Thank you so much, Howard. And uh, by the way, uh, I'm in Houston, Texas, and uh, we are just so impressed with the way the Dallas folks have come together uh, under the uh, tragedies that's uh, been been going on. And and uh, we we'll just uh, wish you wish you all the uh, the well here in the uh, in the future for that. So. That is the title, right. Business Networking and Sex, but it's not what you think. You see, we're going to be talking about the difference between what men and women network, and your networking is your well. I put my phone number down there just in case we had some uh, difficulty uh, uh, in uh, hearing each other, but uh, sounds like we're, we're all in good shape now. So just a little bit about my background. I spend most of my time connecting people, and when I find people that uh, I'm impressed with, well, I promote those people in their in their businesses. I do a lot of uh, writing, and and I do a lot of speaking too. And I've spoken to many uh, rotary clubs. Uh, this is the first one that I've done on a webinar of this world, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, um, I've had a uh, number of different experiences in my lifetime because I've been, as you can tell from my gray hair, been uh, hanging around for a number of years. But some of the most enjoyable things that uh, that I've done is host events where we have some of the uh, top international speakers come in. So I've had folks like Jeff Rohn, if you uh, folks remember Jim from uh, Bill's nodding his head from uh, uh, many years ago. Unfortunately, he passed uh, passed away, uh, Zig Ziglar, just an outstanding uh, uh, individual, Brian Tracy, and Dennis Waitley, and Mark Victor Hansen. Anyway, that's, uh, that's been some of the exciting parts of, uh, parts of my life. So, one of the things that I do is uh, write articles on networking, and uh, this is a list of just a few of the recent articles I did for a magazine called Small Business Today here in Houston, and you'll get uh, access to some of these uh, uh, articles today. How many of you know John Gray? You remember John Gray from Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus? <clears throat> well, I was on the stage with John Gray. Actually, my wife says I have to be honest about this. I, <clears throat> I was in the audience and John Gray picked me as a subject to come up there and, and be on the stage with him. But here's what John Gray says. Networking is about relationships, plain and simple. And understanding the opposite sex in a new and positive light is a key to building lasting and business relationships for increased success. Now, I can attest to that because this beautiful lady on the picture with me here has spent the last 18,973 days together with me. You just divide that by 365. There was a survey conducted of the men and women networking. It was over a four-year period. There were 12,000 businessmen and women, and about half of them were men, half of them were women, and 25 simple questions were asked to people about business networking and sex. And we're going to cover some of those things today. Now, there is a difference between men and women networking. You see, men are very direct. They meet each other, and then they say, how can we do business together? They just talk about the bottom line. Now, women, on the other hand, start asking questions, and they want to find out where you're from, and about your family, and your education, and what you like about your job. They do a good job of building trust and rapport. Now, men are very task-oriented. When their wife talks about a problem, they say, here's the way to fix it. Because all they think about is getting the job done. Women, on the other hand, are natural listeners and discussers. They talk about the problems and the ways to solve. Men are left brain thinkers. Now, the left side of the brain is the analytical side of the brain. Now, women are both right side and left side. And they do a better job of thinking. 
Men are very strong in math. <clears throat> Pardon me. And women reply to specific stimuli, like a baby crying. Men are always in a fight or flight mode. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we meet somebody, the man wants to know whether it's going to be a confrontation or whether you ought to just turn tail and run. Women, on the other hand, deal with tending and befriending each other. This is a picture of uh, Ron Tracy. Last time he was here in Houston, he asked me to be his master of ceremonies. We had 850 people there in the um, audience. And most of his life, he's talked about closing deals. What are the top 10 techniques for closing the deal? You know what he talks about now? He talks about how to build trust and rapport. So, when I ask you, who do you think are better networkers? And every time I've asked that question, I've always gotten the same answer. Women do a better job of networking. And it's primarily because they work on relationships rather than on transactions. Talk a little bit about dressing for success. Now, the question to women is, what does your Facebook page say? Do you have a picture on there where you're scantily dressed? And oh, what about your friends' pictures? Because you are, based on your friends' pictures, determine what type of person you are. Now, sex will sell, but it gives no referrals. <clears throat> When you show up at a networking event, does it look like you're looking for a date or really for business referrals? And were you going out on the nightclub or just accidentally showed up here? <clears throat> now, for men, women notice everything. They notice your hair. They notice your matching tie. <laughs> I see Bill <laughs> adjusting himself here. <laughs> See if your tie matches your shirt. <clears throat> are your, I can't see down there, but are your shoes got <laughs> Anyway, women notice everything. So the best, uh, best advice for men is it's best for a woman. My favorite line of my wife is, it's you that makes me, it's you that makes the dress look sexy. So I thought I was an expert networker. <clears throat> I belong to numerous organizations networking, uh, groups and chambers of commerce and so forth. I attended networking events every week. I have thousands of connections. Via thousands, all they allow you on uh, Facebook, but I've got a whole lot on LinkedIn and Twitter and Google and Pinterest and so forth. I was awarded networker the decade referral of the year. Uh, and I'm a networking director for BNI with thousands of uh, networkers that, uh, work that I work with. And I'm a certified professional networker. I thought I was an expert, but I was going wide instead of deep. So, would you like to learn how to introduce yourself effectively? How to keep the conversation going? The best groups for you to network with? Or even how to start a network group? The best resources of networking? Like books, CDs, webinars. The best social media sites for networking? How to monetize your networking. Well, if you did nothing at all, what would happen? Would you still be hesitant to network? Would people refuse to talk to you? Would your eyes glaze over when you're talking? Do you wonder how others are so successful? And are you unable to make the income that you'd like? Well, regardless of how good a speaker you are, if you're unable to network, you're leaving money on the table. Now you too can learn to be an effective networker. Because one of my gifts to you is six articles on networking. You just send an email to Gail, G-A-I-L, at gailstolzenberg.com with, in the subject matter, Rotary Networking. So write that down, gail at gailstolzenberg.com, and put Rotary Networking in there, and you'll get all six, six of these articles 
at no cost and with no obligation whatsoever. And a little later on, you're going to have some more gifts. Albert Einstein is quoted as saying that you do the same thing over and over again and it's an act of lunacy, well, or insanity. What he really said is, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking that we use to create them. And yes, there is a book about business networking and sex, about what you think. It was written by Dr. Ivan Meisner, the guy that founded uh, the BNI organization. And I'd suggest you get the book because what we're touching on today will be insufficient compared to what you'll learn in that book, Business Networking and Sex. Oh, and there's one other book coming up that uh, Howard can probably talk to you about uh, before long. It's called Connections, Converting Contacts to Customers. And yes, it's a book that I've written. So what should men say to women? Yes, dear. And that's the last thing they ought to say to them. <laughs> I always have the last words. <laughs> Rather than talking to us about a problem, ask us how to solve it, because we'd like to impress you. Now, rather than coming to us all moody and depressed, remain even tempered and logical. Watch Star Trek, study Mr. Fock. Now, <clears throat> why do you think we mean something different when we say, I like your hair? You say, why? Didn't it look nice before? Now, how about my shoes? You didn't say anything about my shoes. Women feel men are unable to communicate. We can, but we're just doing it too straightforward. Now, for men, slow down. Put that relationship. Do the trust and rapport part. Work through VCP, and I'm going to talk about VCP here in just a minute. It's a process that we go through. Make and maintain eye contact. One of the problems is that men have a tendency to look over the woman's shoulder. It looks like he's looking for who's the next person that's going to come by. But maintain eye contact. Listen and ask relationship type questions, not the ones where they're transactional. And assume that women take their business seriously. A lot of times men have a tendency to think that women are just networking or in business as a hobby. Most of all, refrain from hitting on women at networking events. So women should say, Stop trying to impress us. We're no longer cave women. Keep eye talking when we're talking, so you're looking over your shoulder. Our name bags are known for, for knowing our names instead of gawking. And uh-huh, 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 that's not active listening. We know it means you just want us to think that you're listening. Here's some networking tips for women. Eliminating getting stuck in credibility. Now, <clears throat> We're going to go through a uh, session here in just a second where you'll understand more on that. Make time for networking. Remember, your network is your wealth. You want to set aside time every day for it. When speaking to men, impress them with your accomplishments. That's what they're interested in. When someone speaks to you inappropriately, report them and respond to it immediately. And, of course, enlarge your name on your badge. <laughs> here is the... C P. We gotta wait till Bill stops laughing here. Uh, it stands for it looks like a formula, doesn't it? But it's actually a process. It's a process that was developed by the uh, BNI organization. Visibility plus credibility equals profitability. So what is visibility? Well, do I know what your profession, your industry, your company is? Do I know your specific role or title? Do I know your reputation in the community or in other organizations? Do I know about your website and all your social media sites? Do you show up in the best networking events like the Rotary Clubs? Premature solicitation. Now, don't say that too quickly. This is telling people how great your company is, how great your products are, 
and how great you are. It happens to me all the time. The first thing I ask someone after meeting them is, what do you do? And they proceed to give me this litany, and my eyes are rolling back in my head, because that's really, not really what I'm interested in. People are just interested in two things. People want to know if you can help them increase their income, or if you can help them solve a problem. There's two uh, radio stations I always tell people about. One of them is K-I-A-A-M. That stands it for keep it all about me. No, the person is always talking about themselves. The other station is WIIFM. And that stands for what's in it for me. And that's what your audience is thinking about. So rather than, I'm not supposed to say this, but rather than upchugging, what you want to do is to ask questions of people. You've got two ears and one mouth, and you need to use them proportionately. About 70% of the time, you ought to be listening. And the 30% of the time, when you are talking, you ought to spend that asking questions. You'll find it much more effective in your networking process. So that's visibility. Credibility is things like having a one-to-one. -one. That's a... You understand a one-to-one -one session. Uh, in each other's place of business where you can learn about what they're doing. Have we been doing some business together with common clients? Do you dish appropriately, come prepared, and show up on time? Do you have a professional demeanor that would be appropriate for my clients so I could introduce you and give you a referral? Do you have a giver's gain and upbeat attitude? Would I be comfortable having you represent my interests to my referrals? And finally, profitability. Have we done business with each other or given each other referrals? Have we passed a referral outside of our group? That's one thing to give referrals within the Rotary group. It's another thing to refer people from outside so that you start building a larger business. Has that person referred me to somebody else out there? Would we offer to attend the meeting that people have? One of the best things you can do when you give a referral is to actually be involved with connecting the two people together so that you add a little bit of credence, a little bit of credibility to that person when you are referring them. Let me back up just a second here. Um, one of the things that we found, if you... <clears throat> If you do a, a, a lead, that's kind of like a, uh, a stake with a sign on it in the front guard that has a phone number, and you give your referral partner and your, your real estate partner in, uh, in the Rotary uh, that phone number, that's a lead. And that ends up being about uh, uh, 1 or 2 percent uh, effective. It may get as much as, as 5 percent effective. But when you give a referral, you can get as much as 50% success. Then when you not only give the referral, but you're there to make that introduction and have the credibility, it gets as high as 80% success. Would you create a written testimony for each other? We have found that testimonials are one of the most powerful ways of helping people make up their mind about whether or not to do business with you. Oop, I'm going to back up just a second here. One of the things that I use is just a little chart. So you might take the people at your rotary club and list their names down the left-hand side and then put up the three columns, V, C, P. Under V for visibility, you might put the percentage or a score, like from 1 to 10. And then you might put what's the next step you want to take. In my case, if the visibility is very low, the next step would be let's have a one to one where we see how we can help each other build our business. C is for credibility. And again, you put the score there and what's the next step so that you can get eventually to profitability. One of the things that uh, I told you about a while ago was giving you a gift. 
And a gift I like to give people, you'll see in the lower right hand corner where the arrow points, it says Success Net. Now, a Success Net is a valuable business building tip e newsletter. And there's no cost for it. And you don't have to be a member of BNI, no involvement whatsoever. But you'll learn some valuable business building tips. So here's my gift to you. Go to BNI.com and click on Success Net and you'll get these valuable tips that you can use in your business every single day. Here's an example of some of it. Uh, why hunting for referrals will fail you. Uh, how to draw and in, influence, inspire others. Uh, some of the podcasts. How to surprise, exploit, cooperate. Many, many great articles in there. There are four uh, communication skills that will be helpful to you. And those skills include thinking, everything begins with a thought, listening, and it's so important to, when you talk with someone, to focus your attention on them and listen to exactly what they are saying. A lot of times people spend their time thinking about how they're going to respond to what the person's saying as opposed to listening to what they're saying. Speaking. Now we talked a little bit about speaking, but a lot of times I'll finish up a conversation with someone without them even knowing what I do for a business. But they're impressed because they've been talking about themselves all this time. And then there's nonverbal. And we're all familiar with some of the uh, signs. I don't know what the percentage is exactly, but somewhere between 60-70% of your communication is nonverbal. It may be even higher than that. So that's why it's even better to be face-to-face -face than it is over the telephone or over the computer. Now, one of the things, let me just give you a tip about the nonverbal communication. You want to look in the person's eyes. Now, when I'm doing this face-to-face, -face, I'll tell somebody, do you think I'm looking in both your eyes? But I'm not. I'm only looking in your left eye, or looking at your left eye. Now, what happens when you have a stroke on the right side of your brain? It's the left side of your body that is paralyzed because there's a correlation between the left and the right side. There's that same correlation between the left eye and the right side of the brain. Now, we talked earlier about the left side of the brain being the analytical side, you know, the one that crunches the numbers and so on. The right side of the brain is the creative side. It's the artistic side. It's the open side. And here's what happens. Because there's a correlation between your left eye and the right side of your brain, what happens is that people will be more open to you when you're talking with them. Now, I've got scientific evidence on that and, and, uh, and you can show you all the backup, but just try it out. The next time you talk with someone, focus on the left eye and see if, instead of crossing their arms and backing away from you, See if they're not a more open to more community. One other thing I'll tell you about the eyes. You want to look at the pupils. Now, you see, if that pupil is dilated, that means that they're still interested in what you're talking about. When that pupil starts getting smaller and smaller, you better change the topic. You better come at it from a different angle. Now, that doesn't... Uh, <clears throat> Bill, that doesn't count if, if, uh, if you're on drugs or, or if it's dark at night. Okay. So, the eyes have it. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the levels of communication. Number one is talking for. Now, people do all of this all the time. I know that you would like this. I know you're looking for something like this. I heard you say you needed this. And it's just kind of a monologue. It's not very effective. The second type is talking at. And you could really call that dueling monologue. It's when uh, they're just spending their time talking to
to each other, then they're not really listening to what each other are saying. Now, the third one is where you're making some progress because this is where you and the other person are sharing ideas, you're communicating. There's a message of response. So true recruiting starts here. Talking with. Now you're at the point where emotion is starting to come into play and you're going to dominate the communication with the emotion. And finally, talking into. This is pouring into communication. This is where you pour into the person what you're saying with emotion, passion, and caring. And this will reveal who you be in front of you. Now, what do successful people have in common? One of the things is their philosophy. Every successful person I've ever met has had the law of reciprocity as a philosophy. You can call it giver's gain, servant leadership, pay it forward, tit for tat, do unto others as they would have done unto them. But the whole thing is that you give before you get. I just uh, reread a book. <clears throat> oh, Sir John Hamilton. Never forget the secret of creating riches for oneself is to create them first for others. Back up just a second here. That book I was reading uh, was called Influence, Robert Caldini. I don't know how many of you have read that book, but, but you need to read it because it is amazing how much difference, uh, how your thoughts will, will change after, after reading that, uh, that, that book. Okay, seven things productive people do different. They get up early. Benjamin Franklin, Mark Victor, I had to throw Donald Trump in there for you too. Uh, Ernest Hemingway, they all got up early. Mark Victor Hansen told me he gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and the first part of that time is spent meditating. He's planning for the day. Second, they eliminate multitasking. We all think that we're doing such a great job when we are multitasking. Uh, another good book comes to mind. It is called The One Thing. I don't know if you've read that or not, but the uh, the guy that started the Keller Williams Real Estate Company, Gary Keller, wrote this book, The One Thing. And uh, what it talks about is focusing on that one thing in the different areas of your life. And you'll be amazing the difference that it makes. So avoid multitasking. Don't be checking your email all the time. I am, Bill hadn't looked at his email once since we started talking. Yeah. Fear is no reason to stop. Now, I know you think that's an acronym for forget everything and run, but really, what it is, is find every available resource. So productive people find a way to keep moving, even though you can't eliminate fear. Treat your business like a business. So too many people treat it like a hobby. Set those boundaries. Schedule time to work on your business. So uh, one of the things I've found very productive is, is uh, setting a time period, and it may be a 90-minute time period to focus on a specific project. Seek help. There's no requirement you do everything. In fact, we have what we call the, the, the minimum wage activities, MWA. You want to eliminate those. I'm no fan of cleaning the house, so I'll go ahead and farm that out. Identify time wasters and eliminate them. Turn off your phone. Schedule time to return call. Dan Kennedy, who is, uh, most of you probably know, uh, the uh, Glazer Kennedy inner circle and, and all the great works that they've done in the marketing area. When you follow these seven ideas by successful entrepreneurs, you'll be more productive and, and free more time. Now, finally, we have some recommendations. Devote the time necessary, particularly women, devote the time necessary for networking, because there is marketing, which is ways to try to attract the, the, the prospects. There is sales. That's the time that uh, we convert those prospects to lifelong customers. But in between that, there is networking. It stands alone. You want to devote your time to doing that. 
You want relationships, not transactions. Make a commitment to learn more about them. Remember, time is not money. Productive time is money. Dress and act appropriately and spend money on good referral education. I read one new non-fiction book every week. I'd encourage you to do the same. Here's a quote by Zig Ziglar. You probably know it. You can get anything you want in this life if you just help them and others get what they want. Well, that's where the influence by Cal Dean brought into it. So, I want to thank you guys. I enjoyed spending the time with you. Uh, Howard Burke has been a friend for many years, and I've learned so much from him, and I'm sure you probably have too. And remember to email Gayla Gail Solzenberg so you get your free gifts. And oh, I want to give you one more free gift. Fresh Business Connections is a partnership I have with a, a, a uh, well, he's one of the top podcasters in the world, Chris Daly. I'm in Houston. He's in Austin, but we work together. And <clears throat> we have a subscription with valuable information on the two aspects, the high tech and the high touch. And if you go to freshbusinessconnections.com forward slash habitudes, that's a combination of habit and attitudes, you can get two months complimentary membership there. So I want to thank you again. I appreciate being here. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Bill. Thank you, Dale. I really appreciate all the insights. And, you know, I had to get up and leave, and I couldn't do it during the presentation. So <laughs> thank you very, very, very much. Uh, did you, Howard, wish to say anything? I still with it, Howard. I have to unmute you, don't I? If you unmute him, they will talk. You said it's dangerous to unmute Howard? You're so... <laughs> You lose the Kraken. <laughs> oh, thank you, Howard. I like the fun. <laughs> I, enjoy, I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed Gail's presentation. I thought it was really solid information. The whole thing, he really gave us things we could use and, and employ, and, and he was generous with his gifts, and I wanted to thank him again for being a friend and coming today. Thank you so much, Howard. I appreciate it. I think we're truly blessed, Howard. We're able to connect with people from all over the U.S. in this way. And our speaker's list is just phenomenal because of the work you do and the great friends that you have out there. And it's only says good things about you. As you said, your Facebook friends direct who you, what we think about you. And you got some good ones. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Rick, do you have anything to ask, please? Well, uh, I enjoyed the presentation very much. Very good input. I want to go visit some of those free gifts. But uh, two things, did you want to show anything on the district? Uh